on the phone is Esper. Hey. I like that you hold that as well, you know. That was good because I don't think I'll be able to hold that for that long. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I took over from you. I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm very good. Definitely took over, you know. Holding that echo right there. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the reverb pedal? Quick. You know, whoa, 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 whoa. I have to go f further away from the mic and the phone. But I think we should sing this interview, yeah? All right, but you're a singer. I'm not a singer. I, th <laughs> I don't know how that would work. We could try it. All right, cool. How are you? I'm feeling really good today. You won. You won. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into everything else here, how did you get the name Esper? Um, the name Esper is a traditional Jewish name. Okay. Um, I'm half Jewish and half Cockney. There you <laughs> go. Cockney. That's a mad mix. Um, when I was younger, I didn't know about my heritage. Um, my mum, uh, who's fully Jewish, was brought up in West Ham, as was my dad, but he's half Sicilian. Um, and... I kind of grew up just not really having any identity, like, um, you know, culturally. And people would always say, like, you look proper Jewish. And I was always like, what, do I? I didn't know I did. I, I didn't really understand it. Um, and then it was like, about four years ago, I sat down with my uh, my mum's mum. And I was like, oh, yeah. so, you know, what? tell me about your mum. You know, when you just, like, kind of get curious about your family, like, oh, what was your stitch? And what was your mum? You know, those moments. Yeah. It's like, oh, darling, we moved. We moved here from Russia in 1920-whatever, and I was like, oh. There's history. And then, and then she told me what her, that her maiden name was Cohen before she married um, my granddad. Yeah. And I was like, so does that mean we're Jewish? And she's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're half Jewish. Like, we're both. And I was like, oh, okay. And I just kind of started exploring that and just getting into it. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's a celebration of my Jewish heritage. That's what Esther is. There you go. I like when history has, like, you know, can shape a name as well. That's really cool. Mm, mm. But Thank you. No worries. But how did you kind of get into music? What was your kind of like process? Because if you said you were kind of trying oh. to find yourself before, we kind of like heritage wise, did you mm. kind of find someone that you kind of conformed in or confided in when you were making your music? I have a very um, rich patchwork quilt style arrival to the music that I make now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, my whole family are musicians, right, um, of a very different style. My dad is a composer and a conductor, yep. um, and he has worked with the likes of, sort of Shirley Bassey, Barbara Streisand, Tom Jones. That's know, mad. Very large-scale productions, um, very much like kind of pop music of that day, like the sort of 60s and 70s, um, you know, but he was orchestrating it and conducting big string orchestras around that. My mum is a saxophonist and a singer um, of the kind of jazz style, um, and my grandfather, who is the reason, who is the reason why I started making music in the first place, was a trombone player. Um, he passed about two years ago, but he was my sort of biggest influence. He, he played with Frank Sinatra for 20 years, and I often talk about Frank Sinatra's influence on me. That's crazy. Um, yeah, and he toured the world with Frank and with like Sammy Davis Jr. and with all the Rat Pack boys, like Tony Bennett. Like he was, a, he was an OG. My granddad was an absolute. It sounds OG. like it. Yeah, and um, I mean, I have the most amazing stories that I've been told about. You know, like being on tour with Frank Sinatra in. Japan and like one of the lead trumpet players gets done for drink driving but back then it was like it was like the 50s so like they would like go in and like bribe the guy and exactly. like change the blood sample and like <laughs> go on tour and like you know like it was just a madness like but back in the day like it really was as colourful as, as you can imagine you know as Hollywood makes it seem mm. so that, that was kind of my upbringing I was brought up around these stories and around this kind of real old Hollywood style music so jazz has been a huge influence for me um then, I, you know, I, I left school very young. I left home very young. I was 15 and I went on tour, um, toured the country. And then I ended up going to a music school, which I auditioned to behind my parents' back because although um, they are musicians, they they were very conscious of how hard it is to make a living out of being an artist. But you um, took the risk and it paid off? I took the risk and I was like, I just had, a, I have faith, you know. I do have, I have a very inherent faith in my purpose in this life and I do think that it involves performing and making music to people you know and, and holding space for people to have experiences of transformation and healing and 
you know, it, that, that's what my art is about, really. It's about other people. It's about service. And I hope that that can translate more and more as I develop. Well, it definitely will, especially as you drop more stuff. Because you've been quite mm. busy in the last couple of months as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause, cause yeah. You, yeah, because you had Swan Song with gigs that came out. And then you also kind of, you got this brand new one out. Bonkers, yeah. 141, dial in that yeah. withheld number vibe. Oh yeah, stalker chic, come it, on it. Exactly, when someone, calling at midnight, what time, what time are you going to call people at 141 though? Can we not make this a regular thing yet? It happened one night. Because <laughs> <laughs> it depends. I, if it, I called at about 9pm. Nine nine, okay, cool, 9pm, just before the watershed, that, that's cool. Because yep. if it's yep. calling at like 3am in the morning, that's, that's definitely that's stalker dark. vibes, isn't it? Yeah, that's Dorka. But how did you link up with Bonkers on the track, though? Um, I have been writing with Bonkers for his album with okay. my long-term collaborator, Tim Deal, who also co-produced and co-wrote this tune, One for One. Uh, you're going to be hearing a lot more about him. Um, he's a very, very talented songwriter producer. He's literally in the room next door to me, finishing off a track we're doing right now. <laughs> so I'm like, bye, babe, you carry on, yeah? Do the bass line, thank you. <laughs> um, and him and myself and Bonkers have been linking and writing for his record. Um, Bonkers was just sent uh, my tune one for one. As I um, have explained a few times in interviews, like, it was written in a very kind of stop and start way. I started it a year and a half ago with another friend of mine, Todd, um, and John Calvert, who's worked with my good girlfriend, Nao, and done all her tracks, produced those tracks with her. So we like had a session, started writing it, we shelved it yeah. for about six months, and then Tim heard it and was like, no, we need to finish this, like, this is really good. Then he got involved and we started writing it, and then he was like, we need a rapper on it. We've been working with Bonkers, we played him the track, he fell in love with it, and literally the next day he sent me a wow of his verse and was like, there you go, it's done. So um, it was quite a organic and it was a slow burner, but I think that was kind of how it needs to happen for this particular tune. But, it's but good I'm close to Bonkers. We work together. Yeah, we, we, we're doing a lot of collaborations. Joint mixtape anytime soon? Me and mixtape? Yeah, joint with Bonkers. Never know. I mean, Bonkers has just released the most fire mixtape, so let's just let him have that for a minute. <laughs> that, that is true. Mixtape of the very, year. Very, very good. That yeah. went oh, in. Wow. It's wow yeah i mean i listen to it a lot i really do it's it's fantastic i i'm very keen to do a mixtape i actually started one um with eric Ark Elliott, who's my my collaborator from new york part of the flatbush zombies um he's a fantastic producer and rapper who i've worked with since day he's just been a huge supporter for me yeah um and we started a mixtape together we've got like tons and tons like, honestly the levels the amount of music that we've got just sitting on the hard drive right now it will happen but you know i'm just i want to just like live with this for a bit and to see what you know where i where the universe brings me to next you know just which doors are opening and that will definitely come i'm sure exactly because you're getting a good reception from the track already with one for one and I really like it. To be honest, I tried to, you know, before we were singing in the interview, I tried to sing the first line and I was like, you know what, let me let Esper have it. Because <laughs> I can't be like, I'm calling your number at 141. Hey, got hey, it. Hey, perfect. I, I, got it, I got it for now, but like, before my vote like, starts scratching up and that, we'll leave it there. We couldn't meet, she couldn't sleep. Never made a promise that I couldn't.